Judge Jeanine Pirro. She's the outspoken host. Judge Jeanine Pirro is dominating the headlines right now. Tunnel to Towers Foundation presents the Judge Jeanine Pirro Show. Now, here's Judge Jeanine Pirro. Judge Jeanine Pirro not here today. Substituting Curtis Sliwa, founder of the Guardian Angels, and uh, somebody who has been spending hours of live programming analyzing what had transpired Saturday in the 6 o'clock hour in a huge MAGA Trump rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, outside of Pittsburgh, before 50,000 people. President Donald Trump was about seven minutes into his presentation when all of a sudden, as he was looking off to his right, A series of shots were fired. Take a look at what happened. (laughs) Turns out that three shots were fired first from an AR-15 by a guy later identified as a white guy who turned out to be Thomas Matthew Crooks on a nearby roof 150 yards away. Three shots first, one of which pierced the ear of Donald Trump. He immediately went down. An additional five shots were fired which ended up killing one of those in attendance and severely injuring two others. Then two snipers who were in a nest in a building with a roof to the left of Donald Trump spotted the gunman and fired shots that pretty much blew his head right off of his shoulders as he laid on the roof of this other warehouse building. Now, it's interesting. I want to set this up first so you can imagine, imagine, use your your immediate ability to think. To your left, you have two buildings. On top of that building are two snipers in their sniper nest. To the right, beyond the fence, 200 yards away, are two other buildings. Similar style, flat roof, all these roofs are white. There is a gunman who has somehow made his way onto the roof. We have now learned that this gunman actually had driven a car to the location. He lived in nearby Bethel Park, which was a few minutes away. He drives to Butler, PA, outside of the rally. He had explosives in his car, according to the FBI director in nearby Pittsburgh. They have gone to his house, they have spoken to his mother, they have spoken to his father, and they have locked down further information. The question is, how does he drive up to the scene of the rally? Park, relatively near the site where he fired the eight shots in the direction of Donald Trump on the podium. Remember, it's only 150 yards away, he's in an elevated position. How does he shimmy up this warehouse? out of sight, out of view of any security, then get to the rooftop and crawl on his belly with a rifle into a shooting position. Well, we're not getting any answers from the Secret Service. They didn't even bother showing up at a press conference last night that was conducted by the FBI director from Pittsburgh, uh, the state police commandante from uh, Harrisburg, and all the local police. They didn't even bother showing up. And so when answers were required, Secret Service had most of the answers. Law enforcement said, it's nothing we can answer. The Secret Service can answer that. So you had two buildings off to the right, close to 200 yards away, that were not secured in any way, shape, or form. There were no personnel on top of the roof. They didn't have a county sheriff. They didn't have a local cop. They didn't have a member of Secret Service. They didn't have FBI. Nothing, nothing around those two buildings. That was on the other side of a small fence. That's the only thing that separated it from the parade grounds where the 50,000 MAGA supporters were gathered and were already listening to President Donald Trump seven minutes into the presentation. 
Now, the only clear and concise information actually came from an eyewitness. If not for this eyewitness, we might not know the failures of the Secret Service and the security apparatus that should have been set up long before Donald Trump and his entourage arrived. Imagine, no personnel on the roof, no personnel on the sides of these two buildings that are only 200 yards away, and this gunman that we now know is named Thomas Matthew Crooks drives right on up to the, in proximity to the building, shimmies up the building, crawls on his belly with a rifle, caps three shots right at Donald Trump, followed quickly by five, and then eventually the sniper's nest zones in on him. One shot blows his head right off his shoulders. Listen to the eyewitness describe it. He is concise. He is clear. He has given us more information than all the federal, county, state, and local agencies combined. Uh, someone who was here. You weren't inside the event, nope. but you were just outside. Tell us what you yes. saw. And what. So, so we had a party here all day. Uh, you can see behind us at the, the Brinkles Farming Greenhouse here. We had a party. Um, and we all decided, hey, you know, when, when we hear Trump up there, we're going to walk up through the field, stand by the trees up there under the shade, yeah. and watch the, and listen to the rally. Right? We couldn't see him, but we could hear him. So we walked up. And probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking, I'm estimating here, I have no idea, you know, but um, we noticed the guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. The rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police well, the like, other oh. thing that was amazing was is the MAGA around. people no, who oh, attended down, the down. We have an edited version. We have an edited version. Find the edited version. Do it now. So I um, apologies to the audience. We will get the edited version that has no interference in it, that clearly, concisely describes what it transpired. It's a four-minute edition by the BBC without any other voices interfering. Play it first. When you have it radio ready, and we will play it here on the Janine Pirro show. But I have seen a lot, a lot of law enforcement officials now emerging in defense of the indefensible actions of the negligence, if you want to believe it's negligence, incompetence, incapability, and what I believe was purposefully keeping those two buildings to the right of Donald Trump, Donald Trump clear clear of any security. All of a sudden, officials are saying it's impossible to eliminate every potential threat. We're not talking about a sniper a half mile away who can hit a quarter on top of somebody's head. We're talking about a 20-year-old kid with an AR-15 rifle that has the capacity to hit you at 200 yards out. Donald Trump was 150 yards out. Again, three shots were fired first. You heard the sequence. There was a pause. Then another five shots. Then a pause. Then screams. And then one shot that came from the Secret Service snipers who were to the left of Donald Trump on top of a roof. It is inexcusable. How does somebody scale a roof overlooking a campaign event just 200 yards away and all of these agencies, it's like a cluster, you know what? And all they can do is say, well, anything is possible at these campaign events. Anything is possible. This is absolutely unacceptable. And I know there's going to be praise for the Secret Service agents who are attached to Donald Trump's team. Absolutely. They should be applauded. 
We saw their heroism as they dived up on the stage to protect President Trump and risk their own life, shielding him all the way till they took him to the SUV. Female agents, male agents, they guarded him with their lives. And yet, President Donald Trump was able to emerge from that scrum as they surrounded him and pump up his fist and keep telling the crowd his blood was streaming down his face, fight, 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 fight. And then, as he had to struggle a bit because he did not have his shoes, his shoes had fallen off when he hit the deck as the additional shots were fired. He then was able to negotiate his way down the steps and be carried, uh, still on his feet, into the SUV, again, pumping his fist, alerting the crowd of MAGA supporters, the nation, and more importantly, leaders around the world, that he would not fold, he would not surrender. He was damaged, but he was not down for the count. That was such an important, important historical moment The vision of that, the picture of that, will resonate for years, two generations. And then we saw, as they scurried about, took the president from the location, took him to a nearby hospital where he was cleared of any serious injuries, and then he was flown back to New Jersey where he spent the night. I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the Secret Service attached to Donald Trump did a great job. The overall Secret Service detail must be held accountable. When I hear all these excuses that are emerging this morning, after a night of silence, it's impossible to eliminate every potential threat. 200 yards away, a young guy scales a roof overlooking the campaign event. And all these agencies are saying, well, sometimes things happen. Sometimes things happen. Now, it's time for Protecting Your Investments. Sponsored by Colonial Metals Group. Here's Judge Janine. And when we come back, again, we will play the four-minute actual witness who was uh, on the site. Uh, Just to give you some reference here, he and his friends had decided to leave the rally because it was too hot. They retreated back to a a grove of trees so that they could be cool and calm. They could hear President Donald Trump from there. And that's when they saw the gunman up on the roof. They were stunned. They were saying to the police who were on the ground, there's a gunman on the roof. There's a gunman on the roof. They were screaming at the Secret Service. There's a gunman on the roof. There's a gunman on the roof. Nothing was done. Then again, in sequence, three shots fired at Donald Trump by the gunman who is now visible, followed by five shots, then eventually followed by a single shot by the Secret Service that was on the far side on two other buildings that shot the shooter right in the head, virtually separating his head from his body. We'll continue that as we return to the Janine Pirro Show. Judge Janine. This is the Judge Janine Show. Now, here's Judge Janine Pirro. Curtis Lee, we're here today for Judge Janine Pirro. So imagine you're at the rally yesterday in Butler, Pennsylvania. It's in the 6 o'clock hour. 50,000 uh, MAGA hat-wearing supporters of President Donald Trump. He is seven minutes into his presentation on the podium To the left, imagine you are Trump. You are looking out at this massive crowd. To the left, there are two buildings with a white rooftop, and there are two Secret Service sharpshooters there. To the right, in the distance, 200 yards behind a fence, are two buildings with a white roof. No security whatsoever. No perimeter control by security there. And then, as soon as the seven-minute mark hits, Listen to President Trump and listen to the shots that follow. 
Take a look at what happened. Oh. So what has happened is three shots are fired from the building to the right of Donald Trump. It's 200 yards away, but an elevated building, the gunman is shooting down, followed by rapidly five shots. One shot pierces Donald Trump's ear. The other shots hit a a MAGA person in the row who unfortunately dies. Two others seriously injured, taken to the hospital. The gunman, you heard a long delay, finally a shot from the sniper's nest. It severed his head from his body, and he laid on the roof there. What you need to know is that this guy was able to scale a roof overlooking the camp, uh, the whole camp area there where the campaign was taking place, was able to have the high ground with no... No security whatsoever. Aim the weapon directly at Trump. The FBI has said that explosives were found in his car that was parked nearby. This is inexcusable, ladies and gentlemen. Law enforcement is scurrying, coming up with every excuse under the sun. Uh, When we come back, we'll certainly discuss what probably happened based on an eyewitness's report. You'll actually listen to him in length. Four minutes. And he was more accurate, more concise, more compelling than any of the law enforcement agents who basically took the code of America. Never forget, that's the commitment we made on 9-11. Honor it by donating $11 a month to the Tunnel to Towers Foundation at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2T.org. And remember, the Secret Service has not yet spoken. Can you imagine this? And on their behalf, the Pennsylvania State Commandant defended the Secret Service at a news conference after the shooting. He said it is incredibly difficult to have a venue open to the public and to secure that against any possible threat against a very determined attacker. What? Ridiculous. 200 yards away. No security on top of that building, no drones, no helicopters, no surveillance whatsoever. They might as well have created the yellow brick road for this assassin who had intended on killing President Donald Trump. This is the Judge Janine Show. Now, here's Judge Janine Pirro. Judge is not here today. Yours truly, Curtis Lee, at the helm. The most important four minutes of any interview you are going to hear about what transpired at the attempted assassination of President Donald Trump yesterday in Butler, Pennsylvania, was delivered by the BBC, who found some young men at the very site where the assassin was perched on top of a roof within 200 yards of President Donald Trump with absolutely no security around the facility and no security on top of the roof. Listen intently. There's more information. It's more concise than anything else you're going to hear now or in the next few days as officials stumble and mumble and try to explain what a security lapse took place yesterday. Uh, someone who was here. You weren't inside the event, nope. but you were just outside. Tell us what you yes. saw. And what. So, so we had a party here all day. At the, uh, you can see behind us at the, the Brinkles Farming Greenhouse here. We had a party, um, and we all decided, hey, you know, when, when we hear Trump up there, we're going to walk up through the field, stand by the trees up there under the shade, yeah. and watch the, and listen to the rally. Right? We couldn't see him, but we could hear him. So we walked up, and probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking, I'm estimating here, I have no idea, you know, but um, we noticed the guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. 
So we're standing there, and, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. You know, he's, he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two or three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? hundred percent. 100%. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You were not there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. At least three to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. the police and the Secret Service. We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. Did you see, I mean, obviously everyone, when the shooting started, everyone was very panicked. Did, oh, yeah. did you see what happened to him at all? Oh yeah, they blew his head off. Okay, sorry. Secret Service just, blew his head off. Okay, just be careful because well, we don't quite know who's watching, but you, you're pretty sure they, they, they shot the guy. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Okay. Yep. You, you saw that happen? Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. And did you see them go up to him afterwards or? They, yeah, they crawled up on the roof. They had their guns pointed at him, make sure he was dead. He was dead and that was it. It was over. It's incredibly shocking. The guy was on the roof right there. You can see the white roof right there. Did you get a look at him? Could you? I, I No, other than he was in muted colors, tan type clothing. I, we saw the rifle flinging around as he was trying to crawl. I mean, we saw the rifle, 100%. Do you, do, I mean, do you know about guns? Do you know what kind of weapon it was? Oh, I absolutely know about guns, for sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, there is a rifle of some sort. I wouldn't know, you know, I wasn't close enough to read the label on it. No, but, sure. but it, was, it was, was a rifle of some sort. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you, how do you process what you've just seen? <sighs> I, I don't know what to say, man. All I'll tell you is, you know, if I... If I walked up close to there with anything that can, Secret Service considered a, a, a problem, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now. But I don't know why a guy who we're standing there pointing out to police and Secret Service is crawling up the roof. Were you outside the security permit? Yes, right there by that tree. We were outside the security permit. But my question is, there's only a few buildings around here. Why is Secret Service not on every building? Here. Well, there's a whole bunch of questions, I think, that are going to come. There's a whole yeah. bunch of questions. Yeah. Yes, she was right in front of me. She kept going back and forth right in front of me. Yes. Tell us about her. I mean, nice horse, nice lady running with a flag. It seemed very, you know, patriotic. But what, what's, what's the significance of her? No, she just, he asked me if I saw a horse. Okay, okay. All right, well, listen, I'm sorry you had to witness that. That was a terrible thing. And uh, you should stay safe with your family and uh, gotcha. help yourself. Um, thanks for your gotcha, time. Man. Concise, clear. There was a woman on a horse riding up and down with a MAGA flag in front of the fence. He was only 50 yards away from the building. He witnessed the gunman on the roof crawling in the direction of Donald Trump. He witnessed the gunman firing the shots. Three shots first, followed by five shots. You heard that on the previous audio. And then a long pause, and then one shot, which was the Secret Service sniper, which was to the left of Donald Trump on those two buildings, whereas the gunman was to the right of Donald Trump on two buildings there that were bereft of any security. No Secret Service, no county sheriffs. No local police, no FBI, no drones, no helicopters, nothing. And all we could get is no answers from Secret Service. They still have yet to make a public uh, statement. And the commander of the state police said, well, it's impossible to eliminate every potential threat. Plus, now we learn that they found explosives in his car in the wee hours of the morning. The car was just parked. 
a bit away from where he attempted to assassinate Donald Trump. On the line right now, John Katsimatidis, owner and operator and great broadcaster in his own right at Red Apple Media. John, what do you make of all this? Well, uh, you know, this, the Secret Service, I'm not sure if they uh, have uh, talked about everything that is going on yet, uh, but uh, there's a lot of things to be explained. Uh, the Internet is very, very active saying that uh, the amount of Secret Service agents available uh, to President Trump was decreased, and we have to look into that. Uh, number two, <laughs> the fact that uh, they put a person in charge of the Secret Service that was more interested in diversity than experienced Secret Service agents, which is wrong. You know, diversity is good, but you don't give up experience for diversity. Uh, and, and I think that's part of the problem in our, in our country right now. Uh, I had uh, Admiral Stavridis uh, on this morning on my show, uh, who was the head uh, of the uh, uh, NATO for four years, the Supreme Allied Commander. And I asked him a very simple question. You know, the price of gasoline will be uh, $2 cheaper a gallon, maybe a dollar, maybe $2 cheaper a gallon if the Red Sea and the uh, uh, Suez Canal was open again, because right now it's closed. Our Air Force, our Navy is capable of clearing the place up in three days. Three days, Curtis. And we haven't done it. So I said, Admiral, why haven't we done it? Well, nobody has an explanation. It's not the hoodies that are responsible. They are responsible, but they're getting paid and armed by the Iranians. And nobody is doing anything of Iran using the excess money we gave them, the United States gave them, the American people gave them by increasing the price of uh, oil from $50 a barrel to $100 a barrel. We made them rich again. And they used the excess money to pay the Hamas, the Hezbollah, and and uh, uh, the Houthis. I mean, this is the stupidest, the stupidest foreign policy ever. And it's just mind boggling. Now, again, going back to the Secret Service, diversity is good, but you don't give up experience. You don't re reduce the amount of Secret Service agents on President Trump's detail. I mean, it's a... How do you say it, Curtis? It's an accident waiting to happen. What say you? Well, we saw Wildwood, 100,000 supporters of Donald Trump assembled on the beach of Ocean County, New Jersey. There were drones. There were no drones yesterday that cost absolutely nothing in Butler, Pennsylvania. There were helicopters in Wildwood. There were no helicopters in Butler, Pennsylvania. There was no perimeter in Butler, Pennsylvania. There was a perimeter in Wildwood. So double the number of people in Wildwood, same amount of security, and yet they had it in lockdown. And the escape, John, the Secret Service wouldn't even come to a press conference last night to explain how this gunman could get 200 yards away in an elevated position and be firing on President Donald and Trump. Curtis, there are reports. There are reports that uh, people saw that person on the roof and reported it to, cer to certain people, law enforcement people, and nobody did anything about it. Correct. Correct. In fact, mm -hmm. the cut we just played from the BBC, the eyewitnesses, the young men who actually signaled the Secret Service snipers, they said the snipers saw them. They were pointing up at the roof. This is before the shots were fired. They screamed out to local law enforcement, there's a gunman on the roof, there's a gunman on the roof. No response. John, Secret Service has a responsibility. We, the people, need to know because President Donald Trump has not had the kind of Secret Service protection that should be afforded him. And now we have Robert, 
Kennedy Jr. with no Secret Service detail, somebody who you know is going to be targeted by some nut job or somebody that has an agenda. That somebody, is somebody the- somebody out there is going to want the trifecta. Uh, you know, uh, John Kennedy, Robert Kennedy Sr., and Robert Kennedy Jr. And and President Biden is one hundred and ten percent, one hundred and fifty percent wrong, not providing Secret Service protection to Robert Kennedy. Well, you would think, John, after what happened yesterday, that the first thing today would have been an order to the Secret Service to give Robert F. Kennedy Jr. a full detail and any other candidate running for the presidency a full detail. We spend billions on freaking migrants, many of them who are criminals, who come across our borders. We don't know anything about them. This is worth the money to guarantee that we have a violence-free election cycle until we determine who the next president of the United States is. Absolutely correct. And uh, it's just sad what's going on. And the same thing is happening with our borders. I mean, the lies coming out of the border uh, from Mayorkas, the Homeland Security uh, Secretary, it's, it's wrong. And the, 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 our borders are porous, and I believe in immigration. We all believe in immigration, but we have to know who's coming and going. You just can't open up the borders and allow people in. And and the same thing is happening with uh, uh, with uh, 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 they're flying. President Biden is allowing the migrants from Africa, from well Palestine soon. To fly into the United States, the different states, and, and it's horrible. The other interview we had, Curtis, and people should know about it, and the people should play play it back. Uh, between, between just before you went on, about a quarter to eleven, that congresswoman from um, uh, Indiana, that that all but five Democrats, Congress people. Uh, voted not non-citizens should not vote in federal elections and guess what 195 democratic congress people said yes we want them to vote in in federal elections and then on top of that president biden comes out comes out and says well if that law ever passes i'm going to veto it so what does that mean bring in another million uh, migrants, give them, uh, give them voters registration cards on the way in and put them in the states where, where President Biden needs them for votes. Give me a break. Just, we are destroying the United States of America. We are destroying our country. Well, John, you had mentioned my in charge of Homeland Security. The Secret Service is answerable to my my Arcus. He's inept at the border. He's in it securing our country. And do we really believe that he's going to do a full, lengthy investigation of the Secret Service that is answerable to Mayorkas? No way. I don't think he's going to do crap. And number one. Number two, uh, the fentanyl is flowing, flowing in from the borders and and killing 100,000 Americans in 12 months. Now, just to to say what 100,000 Americans in 12 months means, it's like a 737 crashing every day for 300 days a year. 300 days a year times 300 people, that's a million, that's 100,000 people. Oh, John, John, you're absolutely correct. Uh, We've got to move on. Uh, Judge Janine Pirro will be back next week. I'm just substituting to the top of the hour. Uh, but uh, I, I would suggest that they go to uh, your podcast and pick up all those interviews uh, that you had exclusively this morning. Well, it's actually, it's minicast. Minicast. Uh, you know, we have all those uh, Congress people. It's 10 minutes maximum. The minicast is the greatest thing WABC has ever invented uh, and created because if you don't want to listen to a one hour show, and you only want to listen to a specific interview for 10 minutes or seven minutes or eight minutes. Well, it's the WABC minicast. And you, you, for seven minutes, you find out what the heck is happening. And Admiral Stavridis, the minicast is going to be available from him, too. And uh, it's just uh, crazy. The other big minicast we had, uh, Curtis, 
the uh, governor of Illinois that, that was eight, served as eight years as governor. Then uh, I think uh, President Obama did not help him, went to jail for 15 years. And President uh, Trump pardoned him or, 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 or either pardoned or uh, let him out. I don't remember which one. Uh, and if you're an enemy of this White House, guess what? You're done for. All right. We'll do appreciate it. John Katsimatidis. When we come back, eight shots. Luckiest man in the world this morning is President Donald Trump. Only one clipped him in the ear. Had any of those bullets from that AR-15 hit him in the head, the intended target, the very real possibility that Donald Trump would have passed to the hereafter or have been uh, disabled for life. What a lucky guy Donald Trump is, and I'm sure it's a result of the work that he's expected to continue to do in this world of ours. Judge Janine Show. This is the Judge Janine Show. Now, here's Judge Janine Puro. Curtis Lee were here. You know, in my generation, uh, Judge uh, Janine Puro and many of our listeners are baby boomers like me. The film we watched over and over was the home movie camera of a guy named Abraham Sabruda. We watched it over and over. It depicted the Kennedy motorcade that was passing through Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas, on November 22nd, 1963. Unexpectedly, it captured President John F. Kennedy's assassination. When it was available to the public, we watched it over and over and over and over, and we still have not resolved it. Today, there is so much technology. There are the cell cameras. There are all kinds of films. I'm sure they will be conflated, and we will be able to see everything in real time, including this guy driving up in a car that we now found were laden with explosives and then scaling a roof overlooking the campaign site of 50,000 MAGA supporters as Donald Trump was already seven minutes into his presentation, and from 150 yards away with an AR-15, which has a capacity of 200 yards, capped first three shots at him, one that pierced his ear, then five shots, and there was a delay, and then finally, the snipers of the Secret Service took him out. We are entitled to know, we should demand to know, and there should be no delay. Meantime, let's never forget that the commitment we made on 9-11 must be continued. So honor it by donating $11 a month to the Tunnel to Towers Foundation at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, dot, dash, T, dot org. And remember, Tunnel to Towers has dedicated this year's fundraising drive to house the homeless veterans in America those who served in peacetime, those who served in wartime, because our government has forsaken them in order to fund by billions of dollars the invasion of America by the illegal aliens, the migrants, and that is Udiscraziata. At Baker's Pharmacy, care is what's most convenient for you. Care is being here when you need us. We're open evenings and weekends. Care is helping you save more. Most insurance plans and discount cards are accepted at your local Baker's Pharmacy. Care is saving you time by managing your prescriptions online. You can request refills, check order status, and more. Care is convenience that works for everyone. Baker's, a world of care is in store. Services and availability vary by location. Age and other restrictions may apply. For coverage, consult your health insurance company. Visit the pharmacy or our site for details.